Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with Holiday Roast Turkey Cordon Bleu. That's right, this amazing roast turkey was inspired by Chicken Cordon Bleu, which contrary to popular belief, is not named after the famous cooking school in France, which by the way, really is a great place to learn how to cook. And if you showed them this video, it would also be a great place to learn how to swear in French. But anyway, that aside, I just absolutely loved how this came out. And to get started, the first thing we'll need is one boneless turkey breast, which are quite often sold with these nets holding them in shape. So the first thing we'll do is pull that off and then stretch it over our heads and run around the house scaring the kids. Okay, that part is optional. And then once we have that unnetted, we'll go ahead and open that up and we will trim off any of the tough connective tissue we find inside like this piece of tendon connected to the tenderloin. Okay, we should definitely trim that out. And then we probably could have folded this flap of meat in, but I generally don't like to trap any skin inside. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim that off and sacrifice it to the gods of broth and stock. And then once we have this trimmed up, we will fold that loose separated piece of tenderloin away from that thicker side on the right. And as we do this, any connective tissue we run across, we can also trim off. And then what we'll do on the other side, so everything's sort of the same thickness, is we'll take our knife and we'll find that natural seam right there where we see that white line. And we will slice in at a very slight angle. And what we're attempting to do is sort of butterfly that thicker piece. So we can extend that out to the right as you see me doing here. And by doing this, not only are we getting something that's gonna have a similar thickness to the other side, but we're also creating lots of surface area on which to put our stuffing. And if you can do that in one nice neat cut, good for you, I'm impressed. But more realistically, you're gonna to have to make like three or four cuts like I'm doing here to be able to open up that as much as possible. And of course, try your best not to cut all the way through. And then once we have that breast butterflied, as we call it in the business, we will season it very generously with some kosher salt, freshly ground black pepper and some cayenne. And I did say generously, All right, This is like a four and a half pound piece of meat. So a couple pinches of salt is not gonna cut it. And then what we'll do once that's been fairly severely seasoned is go ahead and spread over a couple tablespoons of Dijon mustard. And then believe it or not, on top of that, we will spread a couple tablespoons of pesto, which I know seems crazy, but trust me, it totally works. And the mustard is gonna add some tanginess and sharpness, while the pesto is gonna add a little touch of garlic and herbaceousness not to mention a little bit of nutty savoriness from the pine nuts and the Parmesan. And then once that's spread, we will holiday roast this up with some dried cranberries, which we will start off by mindlessly and randomly scattering, but then we'll finish up with some very thoughtful strategic placement. And while of course these are not typical in a chicken cordon bleu recipe, I thought they worked really great in this, since obviously cranberries go with turkey, but also dried fruit is a natural pairing with cheese and ham. And that's it, once that's been cranberried, we'll go ahead and lay over the two most obvious ingredients, some nice thinly sliced ham, which not to brag, but I sliced myself. And we don't wanna overdo it with the ham and cheese here. Okay, I'm only using about four ounces, but that's gonna be plenty to flavor this roast without the entire thing just tasting like ham. And then same goes for the cheese. I'm only gonna use five slices of provolone, which I think is plenty. And yes, I know Gruyere would have been more traditional with a Cordon Bleu recipe, but Gruyere or another Swiss cheese is usually kind of sweet and rich. And with the other ingredients we're adding, I really think the provolone is a better match. But of course, that's up to you. And that's it. At this point, all we have to do is roll this up. And as I started to do this, I was thinking, what if I roll both ends towards the center? And that way I would get like two eyes inside of the filling. But then I realized that probably wouldn't work out. So I quickly gave up and simply folded one side into the other, which is standard procedure. And then we'll flip that over skin side up and sort of press and push that into as close to the original shape as we can get. Oh, and don't worry about those sort of open and ragged ends because what we'll do next is take some pieces of string and we will tie this up by sliding that string underneath. And then we'll wind that around at least three or four times so that when we pull and cinch this up, there's enough friction on the string to hold it in place while we finish the knot. And then you don't have to, but I do like to trim off the excess. And then once we have the center tied, we will simply repeat that process every inch and a half or so. And by the way, if you search how to tie up a roast, you'll see all kinds of different methods. 
And if you'd like to try one of those instead, go ahead. I mean, you are after all the Christian gray of whether to tie it up this way. But for me, this is by far the simplest and easiest method for the home cook. And then as far as each end goes, I do want to tie that up. But we don't want to pull that knot too hard. Otherwise, it's probably just going to slip off. So we're just tying that one to sort of gather that meat together. And as the meat roasts and contracts and firms up, it really will stay in shape nicely. And that's it. Once our turkey is stuffed and trussed, we can pop that into the fridge until we're ready to roast. Or we can transfer that into a lightly oiled roasting pan or baking dish and cook it right now. But before we do, we'll definitely want to season the top, again, fairly generously. And I think we also want to do the sides as well. And sure, if you wanted to go Cordon Bleu cooking school on this, you could if you want roast this on top of a mirepoix, which is cut up carrot, celery, and onions. But I really don't think that's necessary. And I wanted to keep this procedure fairly streamlined. So we are just going to roast it like this, which once that's set, we'll be doing in the center of a 350 degree oven for about an hour and a half to two hours, or until we get an internal temp of 145 at least. At which point, if everything goes according to plan, it should look like this. Oh yeah, that is looking good. And then what we'll need to do is let this rest for at least 15 or 20 minutes before we slice in. And during that time, there's a couple very important things we can do. The first of which would be enjoying one of the great chef snacks of all time. And that would be to take some of that caramelized cheese that dripped out, that's now soaked in roasted turkey drippings, and we will put that on a piece of bread and eat it. And yes, that was as incredible as you would imagine. And then the other thing we should do, besides cut off the strings, is to dilute those pan drippings with a little more stock or broth, and then thicken it with a roux, and use that as a gravy to finish the plate. And that's it. Once our turkey's rested, we'll go ahead and slice in. And what we're hoping to see here, besides nice juicy meat, is a nice even layer of stuffing in the center, surrounded by a fairly uniform ring of meat. Oh, and once you cut this, that hot cheese is going to slowly start to drip out, to form what we call in the business a cheese tongue. And then before I plate up, let me cut a few slices off the end here so I can get a little sneak preview. And even though it doesn't look like we used a ton of stuffing, it really is plenty. Since again, we're just flavoring and seasoning the turkey with it, and we still want the turkey to taste like turkey. But anyway, let me go ahead and try a piece. And that, my friends, was just insanely delicious. And even though these slices were from near the end, they were still very moist and tender, which is why you really don't want to cook this over 145 internal temp. And then after that small but very enjoyable snack, I went ahead and cut Michelle and I a couple proper slices and served that up next to some roasted sweet potatoes and Brussels sprouts. And I finished up with a little bit of gravy made from the pan drippings. And I think you should do the same. But if you don't, that's fine, since this is so flavorful and we do have a nice amount of richness from the cheese and the other ingredients in the filling, that if there was ever a roast turkey where you weren't going to miss a sauce or a gravy, this would be the one. And I think the reason the ham and cheese works so well with this is because, let's face it, turkey is not the most exciting, most flavorful roasted meat. But when you factor in that little bit of extra saltiness and savoriness from the ham and cheese, it really does elevate that turkey's natural goodness in pretty much the same way it does in classic chicken cordon bleu. And yes, in case these particular ingredients aren't your thing, this exact same technique will work beautifully no matter what you put inside. So please feel free to come up with your own creations. You will just have to come up with another name. Or you know what, just call it Cordon Bleu anyway. To yes, upset those people that work at the school. But whether you tweak this to your own personal taste, or make this as is, I really do hope you give this a try soon. So please follow the links below for the ingredient amounts, a printable written recipe, and much more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.